Okay, this is the fourth video of a recording today, so get ready for some fun, guys. I have a book haul for you guys because it's been like three weeks, so let's go through all the books I've bought because I have a flipping problem. Now, I didn't buy all of these books. Some of them are from publishers, but... I did buy the majority of them and some literally just arrived. I've been holding off for filming this video today until the end of the day so that I can show you the books that were arriving today. There are quite a few. So I guess we'll jump into some things here. I don't know in what order these are going to go in. They're just going to go in an order. We're just going to start here and work our way around the, the, the thing. From the publisher, from William Morrow, Notes on an Execution by Danya, Danya Kukat. Kukafka, Kafka, Kukafka. Now this sounds really good and it, it did just come out and this is a gripping atmospheric work of literary suspense that deconstruct, deconstructs the story of a serial killer on death row, row told primarily through the eyes of the women in his life. And this just sounds like it's going to be fantastic. This sounds like if uh, like my little true crime heart is going to be so happy. Mm, can't wait. So it unravels the familiar narrative of the American serial killer interrogating our systems of justice and our cultural obsession with crime stories, asking readers to consider the false promise of looking for meaning in the psyches of violent men. So I'm really excited for this. I've seen it around on Instagram a bunch and I'm, I really need to get into it. So thank you, William Morrow. Also from Mariner, which I believe this is from Harper Collins, And this is Night Shift by Kier... Kier Ladner, and this is a haunting, compelling debut novel of complex female friendship and obsession following one woman's decision to abandon her normal life and join the otherworldly nocturnal existence, existence of London's night shift workers. Love the cover. I'm super excited for it. It just looks like something I would like, and I'm here for it. So I'm really excited that they sent me a finished copy of this. I'm less excited about the giant fucking trash truck that's backing up. Grand Central. Grand Central sent me this historical fiction uh, called Antoinette's Sister. And this is about Marie Antoinette's sister, weirdly enough. As Marie Antoinette took her last breath as Queen of France in Paris, another formidable monarch, Antoinette's dearly beloved sister Charlotte, was hundreds of, hundreds of miles away in Naples, fighting desperately to secure her release from the revolutionaries who would take her life. Little did Charlotte know, however, that her sister's execution would change the course of history and bring about the end of her own empire. I never really thought about the fact that Marie Antoinette came from a whole like family of different people and how they would have been dispersed throughout the monarchies of Europe. So this is going to be interesting and it's really pretty, I feel like. I really like it. I also got from Forever Publishing, Teme Huff, 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 uh, A More Perfect Union, which is inspired by true events. A More Perfect Union is an epic story of love and courage, desperation and determination in three people whose lives are inseparately entwined. Henry O'Toole sails to America in 1848 to escape a famine in Ireland only to face anti-immigrant prejudice, determined never to starve again. He changes his surname to Taylor and heads south to Virginia, seeking work as a traveling blacksmith on the prosperous plantations. Torn from her home and sold to Jubilee Plantation, Sarah must navigate its intricate hierarchy. And now an enigmatic blacksmith is promising her not just the world, but also her freedom. How could she say no? Enslaved at Jubilee Plantation, Maple is desperate to return to her husband and daughter. With Sarah's arrival, she sees her chance to be reunited at last with her family, but at what cost? So I just, I feel like this is going to be very moving and I'm excited for this one. I'm trying to be pickier now with books that I get from publishers. I feel like in the beginning I was like, I can get books. And I just said yes to everything. And now I'm like, I want to be specific. I have this Anne Bennett, The Rogues to Lovers novel, Girls Before Earls. This is a new series, a new romance series, like Regency kind of romance. Excited for this. Do we need to tell you what it's about? No. There's going to be a rakish rogue and a, a probably gutsy female, and somehow they, they fall in love and have sexy times. I got uh, the second in... The follow-up to Hush, which by Dylan Farrow, and this is Failed, um, and this is a YA dystopian fantasy that I really enjoyed. I thought it was an interesting premise. It wasn't fantastic. It's from Wednesday Books. Thank you, Wednesday, Wednesday Books. And I don't know if this is true, one of the most talked about YA fantasies of 2020, but anyway, so I, I did get a copy of An Arc of Hush 
back in 2020 and this is the follow-up to it and I'm not really like a fan of the cover change if I can find the original cover I'll show it to you guys so it says Shay's entire world has been turned upside down and everything she's ever believed is a lie more determined than ever ever she sets out to the mysterious land of Gondal a place forbidden to mention and resigned to myth in search of the dangerous magical book that could alter the fabric of the world so if I remember correctly because it's been a little while there is a the the magic in this is a little bit of um, I think they use like women's work to do magic. If I remember correctly, they do like they can like embroider magic. It was kind of an interesting premise. So I need to refresh myself on book one clearly because I can't really remember. And two, I need to get into Fail, which is the sequel. And this is out in April of 2022. How do you do a cover change after book one? And this is book two. That's irking me a little. I received a copy of from St. Martin's Kagan the Damned by Jonathan Mayberry. Mayberry. So this is an arc and it sounded really interesting. A body brutal swashbuckling start to a magnificent epic. And that's by James Rollins. That's what he says about it. Sworn by oath, Kagan Vale is the trusted and feared captain of the palace guard charged with protecting the royal children of the Silverlands. But one night, Kagan is drugged and in the entire royal family is killed, leaving the kingdom in ruins. Bound by honor, haunted and broken, Kagan becomes a wanderer, trying to take down as many of his enemies as possible when he hears a rumor that the royal twins are still alive. Fueled by rage to find the royal children and exact his vengeance, Kagan must venture to strange lands and battle bizarre and terrifying creatures. If he fails, he will seal the fate of his kingdom. Kings and gods will fear him, Kagan the damned. So this comes out in May and I love the cover and I love the premise and yeah, I do love a good, I'm here for all the fantasy. So, um, A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. And this was sent to me by Harper Voyager. I love the cover of this. And this is, I hate that they just put the praise stuff in the back now. So Publishers Weekly said, vividly imagined, this will appeal to lovers of fantasy from the name of the wind to the earth sea series. So this is why I got it. It starts with a letter in an ominous Ominous starts with a letter in an ominous journey across dark waters. Ten years after being sent away to the mainland to become a bard, Jack Tamerlane is summoned home to Cadence. But his return is not a joyous one. Girls are going missing from the island, and Indera, a feature leader of the clan, believes Jack is the only one who can find them. So we have unforgettable characters, a spellbinding plot, and a gorgeous and gorgeous world building. It's a sturdy story of duty, love, and the power of true partnership and marks Rebecca Ross's brilliant entry into adult fantasy. So here for that. So that's everything I got from publishers. And I guess since you guys can see this, I'm gonna go through the hoard that I have purchased. <laughs> so I read Venus in the Blind Spot by Junji Ito, who is a horror manga writer and I am obsessed so I've purchased like everything I can get my hands on so this is um no longer human he's supposed to be like a really amazing book of his that that just arrived today Remina and Gaio and Uzumaki and then I have Tomei coming uh, and I should now have like most of his major works and I'm very excited about it and I'll just give you I'm not gonna go through what each of these is about but um this has been like, a, I think this is an award-winning uh, book of his. And I'm mad that the cover is so dirty. I'm going to have to try to clean that. Like, look at that. If you don't like horror or gross things, then you're not going to like him. But his stories are compelling. They're almost like Twilight Zone-esque sometimes. And the artwork is just phenomenal. And I love it. Oh, ooh, we got sex at times. So I think this, I think No Longer Human is, oh, so this is original novel by Osu, Osamu Dazi. So like this is a mangaization of a more famous Japanese work. And this is more like cosmic horror. Like, it's just, they're so beautiful and they go so quickly. And I just, I just love them. So I'm excited to dive into these. Did I read Goyo? Is this the fish one? Yeah, this one I've already read. It's creepy and I love it. And I have to read the other ones. But like, 
like, I get it. I, I always wondered, I was always curious about his, like, fanatical sort of fandom, and now I get it. I picked up a copy of James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room, which is our February book pick for TBR Lowdown. So if you want to read along with us, you can grab yourself a copy as well. Weirdly, this was super cheap on, this hardback was super cheap on Amazon. I don't know why, but I got it because it was. And it's in beautiful petition, and I'm here for it. So I'm excited to finally read James Baldwin this year, and we're going to keep going with that throughout the rest of the year. Uh, I also picked up Robin Wall Kimmer's Gathering Moss. She's the one who wrote Braiding Sweetgrass. This is a natural and cultural history of mosses. I loved Braiding Sweetgrass. I thought it was a phenomenal, phenomenal collection of essays. And I, I'm looking forward to hearing more from this author. I've learned that, that oh, so this does what, so this has drawings in it. And this is the my one chief complaint about Gathering, uh, I'm sorry, Braiding Sweetgrass, was that I really wish that they had been it had been illustrated throughout. Uh, I thought that would really add something to the story. And this, because it's talking about different mosses, it does have it, um, which is really cool. So this is probably more, I think this is more nature and less as like sort of philosophical ruminations on nature, but I'm here for it. Oh no, this is too. It's a beautiful mix of, of science and personal reflection that invites the reader to explore and learn from um, elegantly simple lives of mosses. So I'm excited. I kind of am liking this this area of literature that just smushes together fiction and science. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like ecology and science. Sort of, I learned last year that that's something I really, really love. Do you ever just buy a book because a specific, specific cover of a book because you just need that one cover? Like you were going to buy the book anyway and then you see a certain edition and you're like, I need that specific edition in my life regardless of how much it costs. Because that's what I did with Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, which has like a certain cover, which I'll try to find and put up for you guys here. And I was fine, I was gonna get that book. But then somebody on Instagram showed this cover and it has sight hounds on it. I think they're probably with it, but like, Yeah, I needed it. So I got this version, even though it was like twenty dollars more. I'm from Australia, but I needed this version in my life because it has a freaking greyhound-like dog on it. I have issues. My copy of To Paradise arrived by Hana Yanagihara, and I'm gonna say that I'm very nervous to start this because I don't want to hate it. That's where my fear lies. My fear lies in like, am I gonna hate this book? I really hope I'm not gonna like hate this book. But I, I know I won't, but like, I'm scared. Like I'm nervous. You ever wait for something and you just so eagerly wait for it that you then you're too scared to start it because you're just like, oh, what if I hate it? That's kind of where I'm at. I got three books from Book of the Month this month and I got um, Fonda and, Fiona and Jane, sorry, by Jen Chi Ho, which was on my anticipated read. Actually, these were all on my anticipated reads list that we did on the podcast. If you want to check out that podcast, you can hear more about these books there. So I was super excited to see that these were all books of the month picks. Um, uh, Yinka, Where's Your Husband? So this is, I'm super excited for this. This is Lizzie Demalia, Demalola Blackburn. Sorry. Why do I even try? Um, that just seems like it's going to be a fun read, but also like... And then Black Cake by Shermaine Wilkinson. This is, I think, a little bit more heavy of the books and because this is about, it's a story of how the inheritance of betrayals, secrets, memories, and even names can shape relationships in history. So this just, I think this starts with like a death or something like that, but it just sounds so good and so compelling. So I'm excited to get to those at some point. I have not been reading as much as I normally do. So this is, it's going to get interesting around here. My, I picked up the fourth book in the Expanse series because I have read one through three now, and those were the only ones I had on hand. So Cy Cibola Burn, Cibola Burn, Cibola, Cibola, Cibola. What do we think? How do we think we say this? I don't know. So I'm going to start this soon because my audiobook cult came in, and I really like listening to the audiobooks for these. So I'm excited to get into this this month. In February, I will definitely finish that up. And then me on Instagram, you know that I found a little used bookstore while we were away this past weekend. I picked up a couple things at this little used bookstore. Not a lot. I picked up a copy of Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. Um, because again, we're focusing on introducing Elizabeth to James Baldwin this year. 
and reading more James Baldwin. So that's one of the things, that, like a little personal thing that Naomi and I are doing, because Naomi read him for the first time last year, and I learned about him last year, and now I really want to read more of his writing. I picked up another Frederick Bachman. I picked up My Grandma Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry, which I feel like this is just going to make me cry. I feel like this is about someone's grandma dying and like a child or grandchild learning how to deal with the grief of that. So, yeah. So Elsa is seven years old and different. Her grandmother is 77 years old and crazy. Uh, as in standing on the balcony firing paintball guns at strangers crazy, she's also Elsa's best and only friend. And it also takes refuge in her grandmother's stories in the land of almost awake and the kingdom of me was where everybody is different and nobody needs to be normal. When Elsa's grandma dies and leaves behind a series of letters apologizing to people she has wronged, Elsa's greatest adventure begins. Her grandmother's instructions lead her to an apartment building full of misfits, monsters, attack dogs, and old crones, but also the truth about fairy tales, kingdoms, and a grandmother, and a grandmother like no, no other. I just adding to my Bachman obsession. And then I was really excited that I found these three. So one of the books, if you follow us on the podcast, you know that Naomi is obsessed with Elena Ferrante. And she's obsessed with this Neapolitan series. And she wants everybody to read it, including me. And I did find the first book at the book barn. It's up there somewhere. Uh, my brilliant friend. And then when we were at the used bookstore, it just happened to, like at the very bottom shelf of, like, like in not an obvious place, they had... The rest of Elena Ferrante, so that's the, the My Brilliant Friend, the Neapolitan series. So I have books two, three, and four, so I'm really excited. I hate these covers to have the full series and to now be able to like binge this with my friend. I thought that was a great find. And they weren't very expensive, which is nice. And then the last thing isn't for me. This is a joke book. Well, not really a joke book. When we went upstate and went away for the weekend the other day, we, um, had to stop randomly to like adjust the dog in the trunk because he was like, whatever. So we just stopped and we pulled over at like some random areas in the middle of nowhere in New York. And then I just, as we were pulling out, where I was about to pull out of this parking lot, I saw a little free library and I was like, wait, and I like hopped out of the car while he was just protesting. So I went through the little free, free library. They didn't have much. They had a lot of things in there, but they didn't have much that like interested me. But what they did have is book six. I believe this is book six in this Jackie Collins Lucky Son Tangelo series, Drafted Beautiful. And why this is funny is so like this is some series that Naomi has become obsessed with, my friend Naomi. So I'm sending this to her because she doesn't have this one and she needs it. She's absolutely obsessed with it. It's become like her these are the days of our lives <laughs> session. So I picked up this is probably the only time you'll ever see me holding a Jackie Collins on this channel. So I picked this up for Naomi. So that is everything that I've acquired in January. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it was going to be worse. And I feel like that means that I'm missing something. Maybe I'm just being better. I don't, I don't think that's the case. I don't think I'm being better. Um, if you've read any of these, let me know down below what your thoughts were. And let me know what the last book you got was. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you feel so compelled, please like and subscribe. Um, I put out all kinds of bookish content. I have a podcast. I do all kinds of things. We just talk books here. So if you like it, give it a subscribe, give it a like, hit the, the bell thingy, you know, all the stuff, all the things. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye. So just sit with me, talking to the night into the morning, building chemistry. Tell me, trying to find another way to say this. Place.